I loves me some one degree mm, of chunky B. have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? The panel then includes actress Lady Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to One Degree of Chunky B, chunkyb.tv in the Garage of Love. And go ahead and know, you know what I'm going to say, we got a great one this week. It's true. I'm going to tell you why in a second. And this is, um, is going to be a special one. Not only is he a great friend, great person, great father, uh, but he's in the garage and we're going to talk to him in a second. But give up the big love to executive producer of love what? in the Garage of Love, One Degree of Chunky B, Gary Adler. That's me. By the way, I am enjoying a cold Venice Duck Brewery, an IPA. This is Dogtown Duck. Thank you to yep. the Venice Duck Brewery fans. Yes, yes, and uh, we cannot love them more, uh, except for we love the you know the guy next to us more than anything right now because he's our guest. Fair but enough. give it up for the Wizard of the Knobs. He goes by the name of the Travis knobs. Spencer. The knobs. The knobs. The knobs. You are the knobs. knobs. And everything okay in your world? Yes. Things are great. Thank you so much for having me, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it without you. Uh, real quick, uh, Yosemite was good. Oh yeah, Yosemite and Joshua Tree. Great spiritual uh, experience. Were there. you tripping balls? Let's let's I just did. get I down to I tripped balls <laughs> once before, and then I went. Yeah, I got right. it all backwards. I haven't figured it out yet. What okay. All right. All right. <laughs> the password is mushrooms. All right. Check it out. Here's why you are not going to uh, walk away from your computer right now. This is a guy that. Um, Believe it or not, I cannot believe he said yes to this podcast. He's a great friend. I'm going to cut right to his name right now. Greg Jabara. Please give it up for Greg Jabara. That's yeah. Tony Award winning. I owe everybody Woo! in this so much money, I couldn't say no. <laughs> I'm gambling debt. Yeah. And I didn't, want to, I didn't even want to jump into his credits Come right on. off the bat. But I'm going to tell you something. What is the biggest award you can win in theater? What is it? Just say it. Well, there's this, there's a woman who... It's very hard to bed. Woo. What, what the heck? <laughs> oh, we're not going there. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> How about a dude named Tony? Uh, yeah, Antoinette Perry. Is that's, that what he's from? Actually, that's her. Actually, Antoinette Perry. I bedded wow. Antoinette Perry. Well, congratulations. Uh, also known as a Tony Award. Tony Award winner. In our garage. Can In the garage. It? Yeah, right here. Billy Elliot. Yeah. You were Billy Elliot's dad, and I never even saw it, but every one of my family members through New York to Los Angeles yeah. because of you hooked them up. This guy is like the biggest name on Broadway, right? I make one phone call, and he's like, what do you need, Chunk? And after a performance, all my nieces and nephews meet him backstage, and he gets gives a tour of the theater. How awesome is Greg Jabara? Ladies and gentlemen. Good. My, my mic just went limp, and I don't think that's a <laughs> metaphor. But I will say, you know, we've been we've been friends right. for ages, so it's like you know, right. Right. I would I would I would kill somebody for you, actually. Oh, right on, right on. Um, Either now I've met Travis, I'd kill for Travis too. Yeah. Yes, I want to. Well, um, there's something I got to ask you. <laughs> right, right, right. Lebanese mafia does right, let's, everything. Let's keep focus on this because this is why I want to brag about Mr. Jabara. Here's his cool factor. Right? I am skiing with him up at a local mountains, Big Bear, right? Or no, I think it might have been Snow Summit. Mountain High. Mountain, Mountain High. High. Okay, right? I've seen Greg up there myself. Yep. Not that I cherish those moments and hang on to them like <laughs> no, the only exact nuggets thing. of glory and joy that I have. We're skiing, right? He's got his kids, I got my kids, and we're having a great time. We meet for lunch, right? Talking. Two days later, I turn the news on, and Greg Jabbar is banging the bell at the Wall Street start what? of the day. What? Come on. The, the actual bell, not a woman named Bell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, so I call him. How do you not tell me? 
Yeah. We're skiing. We're hanging out all day. Two days later, I look up there, and he and the cast of Billy Elliot is banging the bell at, uh, at uh, Wall Street. Tell us about that Can experience. Can I put it in perspective? Yes. yes. I drop my kids off at school, what, 8 o'clock, 8.30. I got a text from you saying, come do our show today. That was not... 10 hours ago, the best things in my life happen in a very short, non, you know, spur of the moment thing. So, you know. It, uh, Did you know you were doing Wall it? Wall Street, whatever. <laughs> Chunky B. There we go. This is, how, this is how organized our show is. I just I just gave him a holler today. I'm like, hey, dude. Well, what one of doing? many hollers, and, and I'm never in town. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful that this worked out, literally. Yeah. And, you know, as we all know, it was up to the boss. And then she went, actually... Today, of all days, of uh, the honeydew list that I have for you, uh, you could actually do that at 7 o'clock. And I went, oh. Well, tell her. I said, thank you. And we're talking about Julie, uh, a great friend, a super dedicated mom to her children and uh, the community. Our wives, our wives are ridiculously tight, actually. Yeah, yeah. My wife adores your wife. And, and vice versa. And I love the fact that they do these meetings, whatever it is, the Governson meeting or whatever. They do all, they run the show at our school. Right, I know. And then you and I just set texts to each other on other sides of the coast with pictures of each other's kids going, hey, look at me on the horny pants. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. No, it's I true. Admit, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm, oh God. I still to this day, and I'm pulling it up right now. I don't, don't think I'm just like, you know, texting somebody. I was going through my old photos today and, and look at this. How old? I'll show you people. Travis, in a can you digitize these? Oh. oh, oh, there's my boy. Yeah, this is Zach. This, this has got to be like three years ago. Sure, it uh, depends. What's his height? If he's under five six, it was three. Well, years I don't ago. know. I don't he know. He's a big. He's now a he's five eleven. He's a big kid at twelve. Yeah. yeah, he's not even thirteen yet. Yeah, yeah. I it's, just saw him in a dance routine. That was incredible. Like for a six foot kid, he was knocking it out of the park. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank he's God super for Costco. Talented. That's all I'm saying. Bulk. <laughs> Right, by a vote. <laughs> now, let's talk about your kids. I know Zach. I don't know much about, I mean, I know a lot about Aiden, but Zach, I've hung out with more uh, because uh, Jack and Zach used to be on the same in, on the Same, same bus, class. Same class. Yeah. You want your kid, you want your kid uh, pursuing your profession? Well, LAUSD has this amazing charter magnet program. Mm -hmm. And they, this year they came out with this little brochure called uh, Choices. And it, it features all the magnet programs you can do in high school. So before my wife and I decided we we're going to strong arm him in some direction, she wisely handed him this brochure and he goes, I want to go to Hamilton. Excuse me. After he went through the brochure and Hamilton is like the performing arts magnet here in the, sure. in the basin. And we went, well, why do you want to go? He goes, well, I, I really enjoy the performing arts and I think I would, I'd like to pursue all that has, that, that has to offer. <laughs> and we kind of went, oh, going to take over the family business. Yeah, and you know what? Why not? My, my heart breaks having, I mean, my wife is still a union member, but has, you know, pursued another career. I, fortunately, because I'm funny looking and my hair turned gray really early, <laughs> managed to feed my wife and kids. But I'm going, but he, but in, in, in his, well, you love your kid and you go, you know what? I, my folks <laughs> through tears went, yeah, sure. We'll support you, whatever you want to do. Actually, they didn't actually. Uh, when I dropped out of school at Michigan to pursue acting, I got cut off. But but that was out of love. But let Let's me talk cut about in. that. Yeah, let me let Wait, me cut seriously? in because oh, yeah. you dropped out of Michigan and then you went to Juilliard. I did. How so, how could they be mad at you for doing? To, no, they weren't mad. They were, I had a history. You know, I'm an artist. I have a history of not finishing things. I'm a schmo. <laughs> and the reality was, you know, I I wanted to be an actor, and they went, No, you can't. No, we don't know anybody in Michigan. Everybody works for Ford and General Motors right. and Chrysler. You don't make a living as an artist, so you'll be a communications major with a minor in physics, which you excelled very well in in high school, and you'll learn how to produce television, and that's what you'll do for a living. And I went, great, that's what I'll do to make you guys happy. But the bottom line is I'm getting out of the house, I'm moving to yep. Ann Arbor, yeah. yep. and I'm like, you know, flapping my wings. And in Michigan, all they ever did was theater. I auditioned for everything I could, and I got cast in everything, mm -hmm. and... I was, it would take me five hours of, at night to study the stuff in like the, the 101 courses for all the physics tracks that everybody around me was, you know, they're on their, they're on their way to being, you know, the, the, the nuclear scientists of, in the rockets of today. Right. And I'm like going, and they're doing it in their heads. And, and it's like, I'm crushing numbers for, I'm, I'm not sleeping. And I'm going, 
And Michigan was great because by my second year, I went, yeah, my gift is performing. Yep. And that's what I really need to do. And I know my parents are going to be unhappy, but I'm going to, my, my, the faculty said, go jump, make the leap. Mm -hmm. And I actually dropped out, then started auditioning and then got accepted at Juilliard, which was like, thank God, because. <laughs> How was that audition process? Yeah, I, was about to say, I want to hear about that. Really? Okay. It's a, it, it, um, so I'm living in Michigan. Uh, I'm doing. A, I'm working as a, a line cook at Mountain Jacks, which was Ralston Purina, our food feed, our animal feed company. Right. Had a line of uh, restaurants, and this was their mid-range steak seafood place. I'm a line cook at Mountain Jacks in Ann Arbor on Jackson Road. Best job I ever had. I miss all the cooks. I still talk to a few of them through Facebook. Um, the kid, Larry. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I was doing this children's theater tour, non-union, around the Great Lakes area singing about the about the founding of america as who was i i was uh i can't remember the show was called sing america anyway um the only weekend i wasn't doing either had an obligation to work or do the tour uh, juilliard was auditioning in san francisco so i called together 300 bucks flew myself out there auditioned and i know that the fact that they even mentioned in, in the audition they said what are you doing here instead of chicago or new york i said well I'm working, doing this, this, and this is the only day you're free, so this is where I want to be. And I know that ultimately that um, amongst many other things, they went. So the audition at Juilliard, you yeah. do like two minutes. Uh, you do a two-minute contemporary, a two-minute classic monologue. Do you remember the monologues you did? Sure, I do. You do. Uh, the, um, the dramatic piece was um, from All the Way Home, the Jay Follett, the father, who's the alcoholic, uh, a, a monologue from that speech. And the other one was um, Lysander from Midsummer Night's Dream. I was going to say you busted out some Shakespeare. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Classic I mean, I don't mean to put him on the spot, but it's only two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you big wimp. Who can't do two minutes? Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> back to something I can remember. Um, so it's like, you know, it was like a revolving door. There were, there were probably 150 kids there that day auditioning. Yeah. And I can remember that before it all started, they brought us all into the, the rehearsal room, uh, the audition room and said, Okay, does anybody have a time issue before we get started so we can accommodate? And I just happened to be, my girlfriend who I was dating in Ann Arbor moved to Palo Alto. She's in a production of Three Penny Opera at Stanford. And so, and you know, you're at a, you're auditioning for Juilliard. Nobody wants to be a squeaky wheel. Right. So everybody's like going, no, everything's fine. And I went, I got to make an eight o'clock curtain in Palo Alto. So as long as I'm on a train in time to get to Palo Alto, I'm good. And, and they think you're performing. In hind, well, no, in hindsight... Uh, I think it was just, it was a moment where they went, oh, here's a guy who goes, honest question, honest answer, here's, and, and they're like going, who's that? And right. this is all in hindsight. I had no agenda. Right. I was simply answering the question because that was the truth. Then I go into audition and then they're going, why are you here? Instead of somewhere closer. And I said, and then that four minute audition, five max with, you know, introductions and handshaking. Right. I was in there for 45 minutes. Wow. Sweet. And it was improv. It was singing a cappella. It was, I brought this huge portfolio. We know how we all collect photos from all of our high school and drama, you know, all of our life experiences. I put this great portfolio together, even like some really Kmart modeling shots that I had done in the Detroit area. Right. And I said, do you want to see my portfolio? And they're like, going, that's so sweet. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and it was like, <clears throat> it was like, oh, okay, wow, because I really, in my head, I'm going, because I really spent a lot of money on this, and it like actually is a visual resume of my entire life, but this is obviously not something that's important. And then uh, I, it went great, right? Obviously, yeah. and I had this, you know, I got, I still to this day, I'm, I'm a Michigan guy, so I had this Michigan accent, this nasality. I know that Elizabeth Smith, who's the dialect coach, uh, the teacher, you know, at the time at, at uh, Juilliard, she's like going. Oh, let me just get my hands on those pipes. I can straighten all that crap out. Get that nasality out of there. So I was like, they were like, a, there's a great challenge going on. But the real hook was Michael Kahn, who was the head of the drama department there, his partner, um, Frank Donnelly, who's a, a psychotherapist. Uh, he never treated me, but I knew that he was a therapist for people. He traveled with him to San Francisco and was sitting way back in the corner, didn't even know he existed. Um, if you go to my... If you go to my website and watch the clip of when I won the Tony, he's one of the four men who are no longer with us who I actually thanked um, when I won my Tony Award right. because it was actually him who, a week after I got into the program, after being waitlisted, not getting accept, accepted, 
uh, it was Michael Kahn who sat down at the uh, at the couch in the uh, production office at Juilliard and said, you know, the really reason you're here is my, my partner Frank said that there was he really believed there was something special going on. You should hang on to it. I'm I'm thinking, all right, I love Frank for the rest of my life because wow. it was certainly the event that. You know, it was yeah. the it was the hook. It was that was right. the turning point where I went, where my parents went. Oh, oh, you got into Juilliard, okay. Although my mom still went, that's great. However, you're one of four kids, <laughs> right? And here's what we have budgeted for college. And Juilliard costs five thousand dollars a year just for tuition. This is back in eighty yeah. two, right? And then you have to have deal with housing. So, as wonderful as you got in, how are we going to pay for that? And of course, and she was, you know what? God bless her for being the ball buster because we needed her. Because dad's like going, I can cut into Juilliard. That's fantastic. And dad's going, look, whatever it takes, I'll make it work. Unfortunately, it ended up being their undoing. Dad was constantly, you know, funneling money to uh, feed my very reckless uh, spending habits. And m n my mom had no idea what was going on for a long time. So it was crazy. But back to the audition, you know, 45 minutes you're in there and everybody's like going five minutes in, five minutes out. And I can remember walking out the audition and I was on a cloud. Right. And I was like going, wait, I've been in here for 45 minutes. And you walk out that door and, it, and, the, and the door's not eight feet, the hallway's not eight feet wide. And it's just packed with people sitting right. for hours on their ass on the cement floor waiting their turn. And, you know, I came, came out and the door shuts behind me and they all look at me like, F you. Yeah, who are you, <laughs> Princess Grace? <laughs> How's your portfolio? <laughs> exactly. And, and I'm like going, and in my head, I'm like, I'm Gene Kelly. <laughs> and I walk out that door, and I remember it leads, it was at the um, at ACT in San Francisco, so it's on Geary Street, and you just walk a block or two down, and you're at Union Park or Union Square, and the sky was never so blue. Right. And I was, and it was like, I mean, ultimately, I ended up getting waitlisted, which was like a, which was a blow. But in my heart, I went, how long did you wait? Uh, maybe a month, month oh, and a half for somebody okay. else to say no. Turns out, who said no? Somebody I went to Michigan with, Joe Erla. Get out. I love you, Joe Erla, to this day. <laughs> and I've said it in many publications. <laughs> Thank you. He got accepted to Yale as well. Oh, wow. geez. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, just, you know, text, email, post oh. it on Facebook. But he wanted to go to Yale, be Yale because... They had dorms, and Juilliard did not. And he didn't want to go to New York City and like go from you know Michigan to yeah. New York City and go. Oh, I got to fend for myself and find my own housing. What a baby, where I can go to Yale and blah blah blah. So I'm grateful, Joe. Yeah, you big All baby right. can't handle a big city. No, that's, no, that's true friendship. When you know. And mm -hmm. how did how did he end up uh, working? As a matter of fact, he and I have worked many times for the same director, Mick Jackson, uh, a very accomplished film director, and. Mick, had, Mick uses us, not on the same projects, but almost, it, well, although Joe's in a few more films and with him. Mick than Jackson I had. do The Bodyguard? Yeah. I was in that movie. Thank you, you very not. much. I sure as hell was. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Are trying you really? to show up our guest? I, listen, I'm just no. saying, I was a reporter on the stairs, all right? Oh, I was like, why didn't you say you're <laughs> naked? But no. <laughs> yeah, English guy. Yeah. Yeah, spectacular director. Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah, I swear. So, Six degrees of Look at that. one degree. <laughs> well, yeah, but it all goes back to one degree of Chunky B. Of course. I got five more degrees oh, on. That's um, what it is, right? On, yeah, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon, yeah. if you're out there, we're after you. <laughs> okay, I love all that story, but I got to say something really important to you. I got to ask a question. You might get emotional, and I do apologize if I'm out of bounds, but how's your golf game, dude? <laughs> 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 I knew it. It was the wrong way. Too soon. It was too, too soon. soon. No, honestly, I think the last time I played was when I was with you guys, like really? ages ago, like another, like at least over, it was over a year. You got to be kidding me. I know. I'm sorry. No. You, you still have that fun hat? Are you the straw hat guy? Didn't you have like a little thing look like I you're doing a couple, a, the, rice, I got, I got the rice patty? Rice patty hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I a little do. question. You do? You just finished the film called Infiltrators. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. It's spelled I N. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Infiltrators is actually another uh, sort of blessed uh, nepotism thing. The producers are from my hometown. The uh, Sally Helpy went to my high school. Although we never we miss each other by a year. Her younger siblings and I were friends, and she went on to become an entertainment attorney. Lives in Dallas, has a production company. Her husband, Michael Stokes, who if you Google, you'll see Babar the Elephant. Because actually, I think he's being. He was nominated for an award, like the Canadian equivalent of, you know, the Emmys for his Babar series. Um, anyway, he writes 
uh, he's a great screenwriter as well. And um, so they always go, hey, we got a role for you. Will you come do it? And I'm like going, is it union? And it's like, yeah, no, it's all legit. I go, of course. You know, you, you get a bona fide contract that I can actually do without hiding my head. And, and, and this is the second film that we've done. And uh, Infiltrators was, uh, they always, I, you know, if it were a big, like a huge studio picture, I'd never get offered the role because it would go to some big, you know, top tier celebrity right. to play the villain. So the upside is, is in their minds with their production company, they always go, Greg's one of our boys. We want to give him a nice juicy role. So I get to play a, a really horrific, uh, a really despicable human being who has no regard for human life. And I get to do, and I get to wear really smart clothes and, and kill people in a very, <laughs> nice, uh, very disgusting way. Full circle. Hmm. Did he say he was going to kill people for me? And, yes, and he did. Yeah. Dude, you got to separate reality to, you know, what you do for a living. It's Art getting too imitating deep. imitating life. <laughs> yeah. So out of 100%, hmm. how much of your roles have, have happened from nepotism? Because a lot of people don't understand Hollywood. Let's talk about that for a second. That's a good question. If I were to go backward chronologically, yeah. My job on Blue Bloods now. Tom Selleck, this is the right. third TV show we've done together right. that he's actually given me. And it's the fourth job that we've done together. We met doing the movie In and Out. Uh, Billy Elliot was the first time ever working with that crew, the, the bunch of Brits. But Brits love Americans, so thank God I was American. Before that, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, Jack O'Brien, it was the second Broadway musical that I had ever done with him. Before that, it was... Uh, Victor Victoria, Rob Marshall, accomplished film musical and film director now, but he directed Chicago. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Rob. I can't like just rattle off. But that's okay. <laughs> but it's he okay. had done Damn Yankees. He was he had co-directed with Blake Edwards and choreographed Victor Victoria. But we had done Damn Yankees together prior to that. So there was. It's always been relationships. The, all the big jobs in the last 15 years have been relationships. Uh, 17 years, 20 years have been relationships that I've had with directors or, or people in, in influential positions prior. Right, right. I am sitting here watching our friend Greg Jabara talking and putting it together. I've had multiple goosebumps. I've, you, 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 hit, you hit a core because I, I love hearing you know your path to, to this level. But we've been chatting. I feel like... I, I, I think we just sat down, yeah. but what do you say we we're gonna take a break? I want you to drink some more beer. Hey, before we go, can yeah. can folks know where he is? Can they can they get in touch with him? What's your um, oh? What's your website? I'm enjoying this beer, by the way. I'm a I'm an IPA oh, whore, oh. and this is spect. I was just in Yonkers last week. Uh, snarfing can you their put that IPA. closer to the camera? Please? This is yeah, this is a spectacular, go. John Henry. I'm very proud to know you. Yes. <laughs> A spectacular IP. So if people wanted to um, to look up Greg Jabara, um, where would they go? The first place you always go is www.gregoryjabara. Yep. That's gregoryjbara.com. That's got everything, but Facebook is the best second choice. Yes. And, yeah. and you can just Google my name, Gregory Jabara, at Facebook yep. or yep. Facebook it. And here's, one, here's my tease. Here's my tease. Uh, I, got, I got a funny story about him and Tom Selleck. All right, Tom Selleck comes on to Ferguson and uses an outtake with Jabbar right smack in the middle of it doing something. And we're going to break that down. Nice. All right, Travis, you cool? Adler, you cool? I'm cool. And Jabbar, yeah. you're always cool. I'm we're going to take a break. You guys listen to, uh, we got some sponsor stuff. We're going to put something funny here. Uh, not funny, but something delicious. All right, one degree of Junkie Beep. We're going to be back in just a second. <laughs> Hey, you guys, this week's music is Funky Zen Groove by Tap Fu. Now, you can find this and hundreds of more cool tracks at playupmusic.com. You guys have got to check out our brand new sponsor, Venice Duck Brewery. You want to get your quack on? Taste some of this. Hi, I'm Greg Jabara, and I'm on One Degree of Chunky Bee. All right, you guys, we are back from the break, and you're listening to One Degree of Chunky Bee on uh, ChunkyBee.tv. And just off camera, off mic, we're talking to uh, Greg Jabara, one of, uh, besides being a great actor, a great guy. And we were discussing uh, that moment in your career where you thought, damn, I'm okay. I'm not going to worry about the phone ringing. Uh, you, uh, if you became fearless, or maybe you still uh, live with the fear. What is that moment in your career like, damn? 
I think when when um, <laughs> actually this is might get a little dark, but when you um, when you run your best friends over with your car in eleventh grade, <laughs> and and then they actually survive. This is not funny. Is it Sandy or Carol? It's not, but it does something to you. You realize horrific things can happen, and then you can move on. Then you manage to graduate high school. You get to go to Michigan because friends of your dad's write phenomenal letters recommending you, even though your SAT scores are at the bottom in the toilet of what's accepted at Michigan. And then you get accepted into the Juilliard School, which is based solely on how they perceive you by yourself. Just you, your talent. And then you go, oh, that's a huge validating moment. The... I I was featured in my the beginning of my fourth year at Juilliard on a PBS special called Live from Lincoln Center, where I was one of five students who represented the drama program, and I, I got to do a scene from the Resistible Rise of Arturo Uwe by uh, Bertolt Brecht, and a scene from. Oh, you know that one, Chunky. <laughs> I was just I was I was just reading a script on that last week. Did, did you did you fax that over to me? Yeah, of course. <laughs> And and, uh, and and a scene from Brian Friel's translations, which was very sexy and romantic. With oh, uh, uh, it's all right. We wouldn't no, know who they are. No, you, you would. Christina Haig, Google oh. her, and you'll go. Really? When she was a kid, and you're like wow, doing a nice. sexy romantic scene by a River. Anyway, uh, this was live. Next day, three major talent agencies in New York City are calling the school, saying, "How do we get a hold of Greg Jabara?" Wow. So you know, and you're going. And you're just hoping to make it through the four years at Juilliard so you can do the showcase. And then hopefully someone will see you and you'll have an agent forget getting a job. I had an agent, you know, a month later from that PBS special, the beginning of my fourth year, I had booked 14 national spots as the voice of uh, some model who couldn't talk for Norelco before I graduated school. So my life, uh, honestly, in my perspective, was like... Blessed. It you was feel like, like you had a guardian angel? I completely did. I yeah. felt like I was like, oh, you're not going to have a hardship. Because actually, I made a lot more mistakes I can't tell you about before I ever <laughs> graduated high school. Yeah, drink some more beer. We may get a story out of you. Seriously? <laughs> so it was like, yes, you're, you're evolving. You're becoming a better human being. You're making better choices. And we're going to support you. So, and then, you know, after that... You're going, yeah, I'm unemployed, but I got a job as a catering waiter. And you know what? I can live on the frozen food that I stole from work. And 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 I'm happy, and, and it's all going to be fine. And I never, ever, I always believe that I'll always get by because I, I can always get some job. And then I'll always be able to feed myself, which is something I still believe to this day. Even even when the although I have this I was I was I was, I was showering to come see you guys because I sat I was sitting on the toilet playing blackjack and I was going, my God who let the homeless man? In the <laughs> I went oh wait that's right I haven't showered in like three days so <laughs> I, I, I took a shower for you guys and shaved and then I was like going oh I, my electric razor will I have like a little psoriasis here that comes in when I grow my beard out and you know when the psoriasis started it's when. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, this great Broadway job that I was in New York with, I left the show and came back to LA and I had no idea what my next employment was gonna be. Right. And I was, I'm under the house, I'm under the house sweating pipes, putting some new thing in my house and I got a, and I, I was getting this itch. And it was a stress-related psoriasis outbreak that oh, yeah. I still am carrying to this day, which only crops up when I don't shave. But it was like, oh, Okay, I still can actually, even though I'm not showing it, I don't feel it, my body still holds the mm. stress and the fear of, will I ever get another job? You're in the hardest profession in this town. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But that was Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Then from there, I did a buttload of TV guest spots. And then I and then I booked Billy Elliot and won the Tony. And then it's like, wow. and then Tom Selleck. Let's talk about Blue Bloods because he's got a lot of fans. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about doing Blue Bloods. Oh, yeah, I, we're going to go on to that. Okay. Uh, can I just tell you a quick story? Yeah, go for it. So, oh, yeah. It's a quick one. Oh, I want to hear talking it. about the shower bit. Right. So he texts me back uh, today. Greg does. Is, is this all audio? 
or is it gonna be cameras? No, no, is yeah. it audio or do I need to floss? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how laid back, You're like, dude, do I need to floss? Am I gonna be on camera? I'm like, that's laid back. That's yeah. one cool motherfucker. That's not Shadow Stevens like at all. Oh no, did I tell you what happened to Shadow uh, Stevens? No, no. <laughs> yeah, Shadow Stevens was, was sitting right where you are. Yo, you, he came here, yeah? yes. Because I saw a lot of vegetation behind the pictures with him. Right, no, no, that was, that was in the front yard. Okay. That was in front. Check this out. We open up the show going, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching and listening to one degree of Chunky B. Oh, he freaked out. So no, when we when we posted it, when the wizard put it up on the, you know, the thing, he's like, you never told me it was video. And I'm like, do you see the fucking cameras? <laughs> right. But I'll tell you what, I am not dogging Shadow Stevens. No, because he it was is a great dear, interview. Good no, he's, friend of mine. he's iconic. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. I know him from Michigan. Yeah, right, right, right. But what did we do? Took off the video right of off course. the bat. I'm not going to disrespect the man. Yeah. He's he's great. But yeah. How funny getting back to he wants to know if he could floss before he comes on to one degree. Fuck no. You don't, you just come as you is. All right. I put on a nice shirt. Yeah. My wife wouldn't let me show up in. I want to talk about Blue Bloods because I grew yeah. up on Magnum PI. Come on, who did? You know what I mean? He was the man. He was oh. the mustache, and he still got the mustache. Still rocking yeah. the mustache. Yep. 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 Let's talk about Blue Bloods. Tell us about your day. Like, what's your call time? Tell us about the day on Blue Bloods. So uh, a hard day means I got to get up at four to be picked up at five thirty at a, at the the Conrad Hotel in Battery Park City, which is really stupid posh and nice. Uh, and then I and then I show up and I'll go. They'll put me through the works, which hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. And then Tom's got it all sorted out because he's Tom Selleck. That. He'll when he arrives when he arrives to the studio we go right into rehearsal which means we go into the room that we're going to shoot and we look at the sides. Now Tom Selleck, even though he's not a, a producer at all of the show, this guy is so invested in the success of the show that and he's working every moment that he's there like shooting scene after scene after scene that he only has a, he he he'll not sleep for fifteen minutes like read through something and make notes go I'd really like to see what about blah 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 he doesn't get to deal with that stuff until each scene when we sit down to rehearse so we sit down to rehearse our scene and I learned this after maybe three episodes that I'm not going to memorize my lines anymore because first of all the writers are going to come in with a whole new version the night overnight sure uh, based on some of Tom's notes or network which is heavy-handed and often appropriately but more importantly, our writers and Tom are are really uh, heavy-handed and uh, opinionated about how to best hone the material. And it never gets locked down. We'll have a, a version of the script that we're rehearsing. And while we're reading through it, we're going, what about, what about, what about? And the writers are all right there in the room with us mm. on the set. And we go, oh, we're going to change that. We're going to change that. We're going to give this to who. I think this is not going to work. And so I've learned not to memorize a lot. Is it frustrating, though? No. So, no. so you embrace that? No, because I've, I now have a facility that I didn't have right. four seasons ago to know that in 45 minutes when I go into makeup and hair or, or just go put my suit on, that I can go and learn. Th I can learn three pages of dialogue in, oh, wow. in really? 45 minutes. And, and here's the other thing. Tom likes to shoot his stuff first. So it means we're always over me. So I also have the advantage of being on set, in costume, in the scene, right. and I can furumph a little while we're shooting his stuff because it, it doesn't matter because we're not seeing me. So I have I have like I actually have like an hour and a half of rehearsal to learn of rehearsals with the guy right. with the material to get it right before we ever turn around. Maybe right. more like two and a half to three hours before we ever come around on me, and then it's like polished down in the pocket. Right. Like I can do it with my eyes closed to sleep. Nice. So you're practicing, you're rehearsing like game conditions. You're right. You're you're in the game, but you're on the sideline. But when you get in the game, bound. Yeah, it's it, it, he actually because he likes to shoot out first. Right. It it ends up being the a, a benefit for me because now does is he the guy when they when they reverse angle or they get a stand in? No, he's always there. He's the guy. Oh. Not only is he always there, there was this, there was something we had to do. That was a, on a phone thing, and he asked. He goes, "Do you want me to be there? I'll, I'll be on the phone for you." Like, I don't, I'm not even in the scene. And I go, no, no, man. You go have your dinner at Elio's. Because <laughs> I know that's where he really wanted to be. 
But here, he, what he honestly does, unlike Crocodile Dundee, uh, Paul Hogan, yeah. my first one of my first film jobs ever. It was Crocodile Dundee too, by the way. Dundee too. Yeah, the dose. Who? Okay, so all my coverage, we shot Dundee or Hogan first. He leaves. I'm doing all my all my close-ups with the director. Dundee's gone. Bump. Paul Hogan's right, gone. Right. Tom Selleck, if he'll he'll ask. If he asks, it means he's not doesn't need to be there. Like he's not actually in the scene. Is like an offstage voice. If he's in the scene, he's there. Not even that's asks, awesome. Just is there, and he's <laughs> no, he's spectacular. He's yeah. a solid citizen. No, he's honest to God. He's a gift. And yeah. and if and if he was gay, because I know he's not. Because a lot of people actually ask ask me. I know the I know that he's a straight man. Not that he wouldn't be a gift to the homosexual community. <laughs> Because he would, he'd be a bear, right? But <laughs> he would be a bear. However, here's what I'm saying: I would do him. Right? <laughs> nice. Oh, right, check this As out. As a straight man, <laughs> nice, nice segue into. Uh, I'm over at Ferguson. I run into Tom Selleck in the green room, right? And he's being kind. All of a sudden, I drop Jabbar's name. Pow! I'm best oh. friends with him, right? For um, those of you who don't know, Chunky B, my man here was the warm-up comedian on Craig Ferguson for nine years. Nine years, and I got to meet some incredible people. But one of my favorite things was when Mr. Selleck was on, at the, on the show, in the chair, next to the desk with Ferguson, he bust out an outtake. Yours truly over there was in it. Oh, when they showed the clip? Yeah. Oh, and nice. you know, I'm setting it up. You finish it. Well, they, well so the, the, let's see. If I try and recount it better. So Tom's back, like, hanging his head going, Okay, I know I mispronounced your last name, but and what was worse was I was so flustered because Ferguson decided to show the clip before I got to set it up, which it wasn't going to work if we weren't going to set it up. So here's the, here's the real deal: yeah. we're shooting, we're working. It's me, it's um, Victor Slezak, uh, an amazing actor. Uh, who's there's an amazing. You were at a table. We we're at a table in the conference room, and Tomster. We were. It's like it's a long day of shooting. It's us watching something go down on the monitors. It's like, how do you keep that interesting? We all start like entertaining each other. And Tom goes off about, you know, I had this idea for a pilot about this uh, uh, Western proctologist called, there was a man with big hands. So we, we end up, he goes, what if we, what if we wrote a theme song for this, this the, the frontier proctologist? So the four of us are sitting yeah. there writing down, and we came up with this, this, what would be the opening theme for, and Tom goes, wait, this would be perfect for Craig Ferguson. So he goes, here's how we get it. He goes, because CBS won't let us, uh, we got to make it look like it's part of the lead-in to an actual take. Otherwise, if it's if it's separate, right. then CBS doesn't own it and legal will say you can't use it. So here's, and who was it? it was, uh, oh, who was our director? Um, I can't remember, but... I was sitting there going, wait, Tom's really serious about this. Like he's really going to like trying to, he really likes, and it's real, it, we're talking toilet humor. We're right. talking about big hands in a, in a sphincter. And Tom <laughs> thinks this is funny. And he goes, this is perfect for Craig Ferguson. So we, and, and it, we make it all happen. We, we shoot it and we're, we're giggling our heads off. We went, it looks like we're just like riffing. And then you go, come on guys, let's shoot the director. Okay. Clapboard. Boom. Take boom. So they got away with it. Yeah. And we all thought we just did that. Just to make Tom happy today. Cause he's a little punch drunk and tired. Right. And he was just like riffing. And then it ends up on Craig Ferguson and Craig goes, he plays it first and it really did need a setup. Right. And Craig played the clip first, thinking it's going to be a clip from the show. And it's this outtake <laughs> of a toilet humor. How funny. Yeah. T yeah. Pilot episode. Is that on YouTube song. anyway? Yeah, you, you, oh, oh, no. Yeah, you can. Oh, you can, really? you, can um, you can Google Tom Selleck sings to Craig Ferguson on CBS. It's a must-see. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it was, but yeah, but, but Chunky was there and on the day, oh, text me, he goes, what the fuck? He goes, <laughs> Tom Selleck just mentioned you on the show. He said... You mispronounced your last name, but you know it's like but you're an amazing Western proctologist. <laughs> you got big hands. <laughs> but all of us on the show are going. We all went. No way. You didn't actually push that through. And that's when that's when my love for Tom Selleck went beyond yeah. just the fact that he has provided for my family for 20 years. The fact that this guy has potty humor mm. and go and is a guy guy and thinks. That's funny. Let's just do it. it but, is funny. but 
forgive me, Tom, if I'm paraphrasing wrong, I know that he caught hell from his publicist who went, that's not Tom Selleck. That's not the image we want to portray. Oh, come on. No, no, no. And as the person that he's hiring her to be, this is the persona. And and what I know is that he had such great joy yeah. being yeah. being the toilet humor guy. Being a real person. Oh, loved him for it. Yeah. How cool is it that you doing you don't have to audition for him? The last three gigs you've had with him, yeah. he just calls you and say, Hey, you want to do it? Well, th- this this one actually I didn't have to audition. Yeah. The the other two, I went in and he was in the room. Okay. And it was like, Oh, this is your show? Right. What? How many episodes no. I'd like to know of Blue Bloods have you done? Um I can tell you that I'm doing, I'm, uh, except for the episode that just aired, you'll see me in all of this season. Wow. And the majority of two and three, and I started the last, the, the third and second to last episode. So of that's got to give an actor some security. Oh, yeah, no. speaking of security, speaking of security, what kind of, what kind of cash are you pulling down from this? Be open with us. All right, this is an interesting story. So uh, I finished season one. Was it season one? Did season two, Leonard Goldberg, the one of the godfathers of you know episodic TV, Charlie's Angels, Fantasy Island, he's our executive producer, says, we're going to go to back to CBS. We want to make Greg a series regular. And I'm sorry, CBS, but this is fact. So, right. so um, uh, CBS said, no, we don't want to. We don't want to make Greg a, a series regular. We don't want to pay that kind of money. But the show wanted me enough that they um, they made it worth my while. They ponied up a bit. And it's been, uh, uh, what I can say is that I feel uh, incredibly um, valuable. But you're a freaking job. cheapskate because every time you do something in your house, you do it. You're like making. Didn't you make? He's like got a, eczema underneath the house. I mean, <laughs> from from insulation. Yeah. 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 I was just under the house three days ago. Did like a year ago? You put a deck on the back. Oh yeah, something? I got to finish that tomorrow. Actually, <laughs> Julie's like, get your ass to work. By the way, but, what does Tom Selleck's house look like? Oh, you know, I flew over his house. <laughs> <laughs> He's not allowed to visit. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I'll tell you what. You know what? Here's what I found out. So I got my my wife and kids gave me this flying lesson for Christmas. So we're flying and we're flying from somewhere in, you know, like Ventura-ish, coming back over like Dana Point. And he goes, yeah, that's Hidden Valley. I go, Hidden Valley? That's that's where Selig lives. And I looked out and I'm seeing a helicopter pad. Oh, no. And a, an avocado and an avocado ranch because I know Tom has avocados. So then I go back to work like a week later. I go, okay, I think I flew over your house. And he goes, did you see a helicopter pad? I go, that's your house, isn't it? He goes, he goes Dean Martin put that in. Wow. He bought, oh, man. Come like, on. bought Dean Martin's house and lives in a, tragically, an avocado ranch that's dying because of our drought. Oh, man. Oh, that's too bad. But it's still cool. You got a helipad right in your freaking backyard. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I'm not betraying anything. If you look it up on the Aviator's you know, daily book, you can find this out. Um, he's, got the, he's got a grandfather helipad that you can land and take off anytime, 24 hours a day. And it's like in in the valley, that's like gold. There's wow. there's there's so many restrictions now about heliport activity. But he's got this pad that got grandfathered in from Dean Martin that he can take off and land at any time. Any that's day. Magnum PI. Yeah, that's Tom. Yeah, all right, but listen, I'm reading between the lines. It's safe to say Greg's never been invited to, to his house. Not well, true. Uh oh. <laughs> no. Here we go. Now you now you woke him up. <laughs> no. It, here's here's the here's the truth. So we we take our break for Christmas, and. Tom's a very, he's a very private man. Yeah. In the workplace, like I'll admit it, at work, we go to dinner, we hang out, we have cigars, we, he's like, but when he's home with his wife and his daughter and his, his private world, he's a very private guy. Mm-hmm. And I respect that. This Christmas break, he goes, we're like getting out of makeup, but he goes, hey, what, 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 maybe we can, maybe we can come over for dinner or you yeah, can go grab a steak. And I'm like going, that's a first. That'd be wow. awesome. Nice. And I came home and I said, get this. Right. I'm like, I went up the ladder in terms of Tom just said, let's get together. Let's come over, for, have the family over, come to the ranch, or we'll get to, we'll all get together. We'll have a steak. We'll have some thinking, guacamole. That's awesome. Did it happen? No. <laughs> However, come on, Tom. Well, but wait, the, the, the fact is how many years I've known him? 17 years. That's the first time that he, in public, that he said, you know, all right. Let's, let's loosen up. He's totally. You That's know what? Awesome. Honestly, 
What are the chances of Tom Selleck sitting in that chair? Ooh, it's all up to you, Jabara. Can we make that happen? We'll just plant the seed right now. And I'm saying shirtless, because I want to see it all. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know something? How about one of those wife beaters and he just tears off? Oh, that'd be it. sick. Yeah. You, I know we're talking about blue, bud, blue blood. <laughs> you guys just killed it. Now there's no shot. Yeah, good job. We just blew that <laughs> shot. <laughs> All right, now that you're on this killer show, mm. there's so many millions of steps that you've you've taken to get to this level. I hate to be vague, but can you bust it down for somebody new? Somebody new getting into this business, give them some words of advice, get the fuck out of town or fight like a, you know, a mad dog to to get what you want. <laughs> okay. What do you recommend? So I'm I'm at the um I get because of Blue Bloods and Tom Selleck. I get to I get invited to the VIP treatment at the Ranger game two weeks mm. ago, nice. and um and one of the trainers um, uh, uh, Bruce, crap, sorry Bruce, but dear friend of my wife's for like a million years. We're talking. I go down and say hi to him. We're talking, and then there's a little line of people that want autographs. And this one lovely little, I'd say, high school girl, maybe high school girl, comes up, asks for an autograph, and goes, tell, t- what, "Can you give me a word of advice? I really want to be famous." Oh no! And I went, "I went. Wait, do you want to be famous, or do you want to be a really su- a, a really good actor?" She goes, "Yeah, I want to be a really good actor." I go, "Good, because that's a much better journey to take because fame is completely out of your control." Right. You can you can go to the best yeah. schools, work hard to be the best you can at what you want to be, but the fame thing is not within your grasp. And and I was like, and I honestly was saying it, I mean truly for her benefit. But it was like, I mean there were like a bunch of people. It's like all the all the there are a lot of Blue Bloods fans that go to Rangers games. And we're talking a little aisle right there next to the box. And you got Lundquist right here who's listening through the crack because he's not goalie that night and i'm like going oh man this is like i really have to say the right thing for this little girl who you know and and the reality is i tell people um immerse yourself in in the performing every way you can every day without because someone says you have to it's because it's the thing you want to wake up and do right and the moment you don't wake up and go that's i just want to i don't care if i get paid i just want to do it the day that that stops that's the day you got to go oh what is it i really want to do and then find that and pursue that with your whole heart. Because the greatest the greatest honor you can do yourself and the people who gave birth to you and that raised you and educated you is to take the time to go, what is it that really makes me want to wake up in the morning? Right. And really and pursue that thing with your whole heart because it makes you happy. Because your happiness, not success, not financial wealth, your your happiness is the most important thing that you can do to honor yourself and all the people who helped you stay alive till this point in your life. And I think that's the, the greatest message. Is, it, is he not awesome? I got shin bumps. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> when you get shin bumps in the garage of love, that means you've taken yeah. us to a really yeah. emotional, I'm saying mandatory group hug after this yeah. fucking oh, podcast. Sure. I don't care where it is. We'll put the headsets off and hug it out. Yeah. Without <laughs> shirts and stuff. You know. <laughs> 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 You'll never get Selleck here. Travis, sitting there, have you reached off. your goals? I mean, if that's what we're talking about. No, he's sitting hungry. In that chair. He's hungry. He is? Yeah. Well, I got shin bumps over here. I'm just trying to rub them out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. That's not really weird. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, Greg Jabbar, we're going to uh, head, uh, you know, uh, go around third, head for home in a second because we're going to wrap this up. But um, every time we end a show, we're about to close it and about to, you know, hug it out. But Travis, the wizard, always comes up with some. I don't freak- think we've. I don't want to get there yet. Do we I have know. to go there right now? Don't want to go there. Are Can we talk about afraid? Seth MacFarlane and his work on Family Guy, American Dad, oh, and Cleveland yeah. Show? Hell yeah! Because oh. there's so many fans out there. You know, if you on. don't mind, I'm here. Oh, oh this chair is comfy. I have a beer in front of me. What's I'm it fine. like to be a voiceover artist on one of those animated TV shows? Uh, Linda Lamontagne is the casting director for all the Fox shows. Not only is she hot. <laughs> but she also happens to be the woman who cast me in um, the Sybil. There was a sitcom. It was my first job ever. With in, Sybil Shepherd. With Sybil Shepherd. Uh, it was my first job ever when I moved to L.A. in 1998. Linda LaMontagne went from TV casting to animated. She's Seth MacFarlane's casting guru. She is the greatest gift I could ever hope for because they they have such a wealth of shows from... Uh, you know, Cleveland Show, American Dad, Family Guy, um, P- 
Dr. Martin. Yeah, Bob's Beattie, Burgers, you know, the whole deal. All those. And she always goes, and it's, it's a, you know, it's a, excuse me, now it's like, they, they go, here, you're going to do like three different characters. They're only like one or two lines each. And you go into this, it's across the street from the, on Wilshire, across the street from the um, the SAG building. And it's that brown sort of tiered where Variety used to be, but they have like a floor there. And you go in and there's a, a sound booth, no bigger than this, that has both a control room and a, a sound room. And then you and then around it are all these cubicles and foosball and ping pong and and uh, you know dartboards and all this shit that they have that the the writers have to keep themselves sane and to kind of loosen up. But then they right. go back to the table and write. But you go into this little box, soundproof box, and you go. And the director comes in, and you get, when I've I've come in with like ideas about what I think it should be, and, and they just go, Shut "Yeah, up. that's great." <laughs> However, what a, try this? And the director gives you a line reading, and you realize that all the writers and directors could do all the voices of all the characters that that, and they wouldn't need to hire a single actor, right? But they have to, because that's what you got to do. You can't like just write it and do all the voices yourself. Although they all could. Seth so, does a ton of them, and Seth does a ton of them. Uh, so that that's like now what my life is. And you just go and you go, I'm happy for this job because the residuals are going to be ridiculous. Did they just right. hand you Wonderful. like a stack of cash on your way out? Is that what it, happened? It's almost right like Right from that. the machine? You, you, you literally just sign out. your name and, it, and you can hear the ka-ching, ka-ching. Yeah, the ATM at the, at the but door. Day, season one was the first time I went in and it was to work on an episode called Peter Peter Caviar Eater, which was this big musical episode in their first season. And they wanted actors who could sing. And that's why Linda called me in because she knew I had a Broadway background. And we spent two days in a recording studio. And we, we, we laid down this song. And we laughed. We laughed so hard. And, and, and it was Seth and his sister, who's a very attractive woman. I can admit that because my wife knows that I love her terribly. But there was a bunch of these guys who I didn't know who were just like the voices of everything. And we were all in this room and we were singing these big choral numbers that was a ripoff. It was a, a, a satire of Annie's... You know, um, I think I'm going to like it here, but the song was "We Live to Kiss Your Ass." I think it was a song, <laughs> <laughs> and and that was that was my first experience. These first two days working with these guys, and and it w it was nothing but. I mean, Seth MacFarlane only has a smile on his face the whole time. I've never seen him. I've never seen him unhappy. Really? He, he's he's got a perpetual like 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 impish grin. I've never always. seen him without a Jack and Coke mm. in his hand. <laughs> I didn't see that in the workplace. <laughs> right. Although we did go to his birthday party. Wait, what was it? It was uh, actually it was the end of season party at uh, some big club, and and he was. Uh, they just announced he was going to host the. Uh, what year was he was going to host? Yeah, the right, right, right. Yeah, or yeah, the yeah, Emmys. Yeah. What year was that? The Emmys. Oh, Jesus, a couple probably, years three, ago. Three, four, that was three. the last time I saw him. What I saw was as my wife and I were we were leaving, we wanted to go say hi. He was like just surrounded by a bunch of young, very attractive, but you very young. You know, what a shock! Lovers, mm -hmm. you know, girls who just would give yeah. everything, and you, and he. Uh, this is my interpretation. I did not see he was polite, but he was obviously swamped. And we and I just my wife and I just went. We're just going to go because we're not going to fight through that right. insanity. And 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 I my heart kind of broke for him. Yeah, because it's like. What do you do? You, you can't. Know? You know, I'm, I'm thinking he can't even like go to a public restroom and take. There a is job. too much yeah. of a good thing at times. Right, right. But, wow. But, uh, and I can't remember the producer guy that he started Family Guy with. We, there were just, it was, it, it's only been laughs. There, it's a very happy place. Well, that's good to hear. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Behind the scenes, the dude's like, just like he is in front of the scene. Yeah. The guy's got uh, two spinoff shows. He's just, he's on fire. I want to kick him in the shin. Right? Bumps Me or no too. bumps. <laughs> What's the chance of him get, coming right here on this uh, show? You got to talk to Jabbar. All right, let's give him a, let's give <laughs> him a shout. Hey, uh, <laughs> Wizard, are you ready for your uh, obnoxious question to wrap it up? Yeah. Obnoxious? What makes sense? I mean, did I say that out loud? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, Chucky? <laughs> well, this has been a lot of flowers and sunshine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get the brass tags. But I really want to know who's the biggest asshole you've met in Hollywood. Oh, I love oh, it. I actually and you mentioned... have to name names. I yeah. actually mentioned their name. Oh, we've already been there? We have. And <sighs> this is public, though. Mm. It's like public radio. No can one listens rhyme to it. it. Well, you can just tell us a story and let, let some sleuth pick it out of the pick it out of the episode. Yeah, not that not that she starred Bruce Willis in another series earlier on. Ah. But, but let's just say... When I worked on that show, 
I don't know that she was in her happy place. And that was your first show. In, in L.A. That was your first taste. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, listen. Uh, your credits are so solid and so impressive. But I got to tell you something. When I knew that I was lucky to be your friend, you nailed the fuck out of an Olive Garden commercial. Okay. <laughs> Your daughter went off to school. Yeah. I and think... then you met her on campus in her dorm room and yeah. you took her new roommate to the Olive Garden and you had limitless breadsticks. Oh, come yeah. on. Seriously, Listen, that's good work. Right when, that when, I, when I finally watched that spot, I'm going, I think daughter's a little too hot on dad. I mean, honestly, I'm like going, really? They took those? They, they, they used those takes? Yeah. Daughter looks a little lascivious. I'm I know going, the hand on the thigh. Who no, puts the hand no, no, on the daddy's no, thigh? No, it's like, Daddy, I love you for that. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I really thought, oh, this is a little too much. I got to so. say, that was the first time I'd met Greg in the past. But it was the first time I saw him on a commercial and I went, this guy right. knows the fuck he's doing. Right. Like, right. he's the real deal. And then I saw him on Cialis or some shit like that. It was awesome. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the boner. Wait. That, that's, How many boner pill commercials have you that's done? That's money because <laughs> <laughs> just this is Cadoit. High blood pressure, high cholesterol. Had nothing to do with boner, you know, erectile dysfunction. Yeah. This was a, a commercial about high blood pressure but because it was such a smoking hot spot with me right. tango dancing yeah. with my very hot yes. wife yep. who uh, whose name also escapes me she was if you oh, she's never going to forgive me can now can you do a yeah. promo for us look into that Facebook camera and say plans. if you have erectile dysfunction you should be it watching was, One Degree was, of Chunky Bake <laughs> okay, go ahead go ahead yeah 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 do that <laughs> look if you have erectile dysfunction <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get it yeah. All right, here All right. we go yeah. in three <laughs> I can do it. He here can't it get it up. No, here it comes. Right, here we go. If you have erectile dysfunction, you should be watching One Degree of Junkie <laughs> B. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take That's it. One more one. take. Let me try again. Right, here, here we go. go. Here we go. In three, two. If you have erectile dysfunction, you should be watching One Degree of Chunky B. I love it. That's a take. <laughs> and, and keep all that other shit in there. Okay, check it out. We like to um, give a gift to our um, to our uh, our guests. Hold yeah. On. Am I messing up this camera? You just can't keep it. All right, hold on. Hold on. Excuse me. You just can't. Oh, oh you know what? It's hold on. Voice. This is beautiful. Yeah. I've been staring oh, at it all gosh. night. Oh, I've actually geez. been I've actually been looking at my reflection in right. it all night. Okay. Cool. Who needs is a this monitor? Is camera still good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Check this out. This is one degree. It's it's a uh, it's a mirror uh, made by Don DeBear. He is a fan of the show. And Don, keep this stuff going. And check this out. He's our number one fan. He's our number one. He gives us. Here's Ryan Sickler when he was one of our first guests. Yeah. Right? And so, Greg Jabara, you go home and you wear this naked coming out of the shower and say, hey, Julie, it's time to get chunkified. <laughs> All right? All right? Here you go. Here's a gift from me to you. I can't huh? wait to see the benefits of wearing this in the shower. What a great Thank show. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Wait, I can feel the mojo already. <laughs> All right, you guys. We were blessed with uh, the man of, uh, of the hour, Greg Jabara. Not only a great friend, uh, a great person, a great actor. We are blessed to have him. Once again, you're watching One Degree of Chunky B. Give it up for Adler and, of course... Uh, the beer that Venice is going to drink forever. Okay, check that out. Uh, what, 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 what is this? The IPA? Yeah, that's yeah. the Dogtown Duck. The Dogtown Duck. Duck. If you're not sipping it, you're, you're, you're missing out. The Wizard, always a pleasure. The Knobs. The thank Knobs. You. Thank you, gentlemen. Greg, great meeting you. <laughs> nice meeting you, Travis. Greg Jabara, we thank you with our hearts. You've got integrity, character, values, friendship, and loyalty, and we are psyched that you hung out with us. Thank we you. are One Degree of Chunky B and we are D-O-N-E. See ya. Woo! Now, I just have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? that includes actress Lainey Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? 
Uh, what was the question? <laughs>